Are you tired of complexity and confusion when trying to share data between sibling components in Angular? What if I told you there is a streamlined and efficient way to do this in Angular 17? Well, stay tuned to simplify your Angular projects. Hello Angular enthusiast, welcome back to IASTEC where we demystify Angular one step at a time. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more insightful content. I am a for a seasoned Angular developer with over a decade of experience. I have tackled this issue in numerous projects and today I am here to share my insights and solutions with you. Let's dive into the world of Angular 17 and make your coding journey smoother. Let's kick things off by understanding the challenge at hand. In any Angular application, components are the foundational building blocks. They are like individual workers, each responsible for a specific task. However, when it comes to sibling components, those at same level but serving different functions, passing data isn't as straightforward as it might seem. This can lead to a maze of dependencies and complex interactions, which we definitely want to avoid for maintainable and efficient code. Picture this, you are building a dynamic application. One part of your screen, let's call it a component A, displays a list of items, perhaps user profiles. Right beside it, component B allows you to select a profile and edit details. These components are siblings, they work side by side and need to communicate effectively. The question is, how does component B knows which profile to display for editing when you select one in component A? And how does component A refresh its list when you have updated a profile in component B. Developer often attempt direct communication or complex event chains leading to a spaghetti code scenario. This not only makes your code hard to read but also introduces bugs and makes future updates a nightmare. You might have faced these frustrations yourself getting tangled in a web of events and callbacks making your project harder to manage and scale. Fortunately, Angular 17 has recognized these these challenges and provides more streamlined efficient ways to handle sibling communication. We are tackling about a set of tools and practices that turn what was once a complicated process into a manageable and elegant workflow. This segment will explore these tools and set the stage for detailed practical solutions we will dive into in the next segments. By the end of this segment, you will have a clear understanding of the problem we are addressing and why it's crucial to tackle it the right way. You will be primed and ready to explore the Angular 17 features that will revolutionize the way your components talk to each other. So let's clear the confusion and set the foundation for efficient, clean and maintainable Angular code. Setting up your Angular environment correctly is crucial. So let's begin by installing Angular 17 and creating our sibling components. So follow along closely and you will have a solid foundation in no time. First ensure you have Node.js installed on your system. Then we will install the Angular CLI globally using npm nodes package manager. The Angular CLI is a powerful tool that will help us create and manage our Angular projects. So to install it, just run the command npm install dash g angular slash cli. This command installs the angular command line interface globally on your machine allowing you to access it from any directory. After it is installed, let's create a new angular project. We will call it anything whatever you prefer. So this cli will set up everything we need. For that you just need to run the command ng new and project name. This command creates a new directory with all necessary angular files. It might take a few minutes as it's also installing project dependencies. I already have created this so I will not run it again. I have my new project created in, and I have opened it in my VS code already. Once the installation is complete, navigate into your new project directory and open it in your favorite editor. Next up, let's generate our two sibling components. We'll name them display data and edit data. So for that, open the terminal in the root directory of your project and type the command ng generate component and the name of component that is display data. Now let's generate the second one, edit data. Okay, so these command instruct Angular to generate a new component 
each with its own TypeScript, HTML, and CSS files. They will also automatically declare these components in our app module if you are using app module. If you are using standalone component, then you may need to import these components in the component where you want to use it. Before we proceed, let's understand the basic structure of Angular component. So open the display data component that we just generated. So here is the TypeScript file for our display data component. It's where we will define the logic and data so notice the component decorator which tells angular that this class is component and provides metadata like the selector template url and style urls fantastic you have now set up your angular environment and created two sibling components you have taken the first step towards building a dynamic application with angular 17 in the next segment we will dive into angular services the key to enabling efficient communication between these components now that our environment is ready our components are in place it's time to explore angular services and how they will help our components Angular services are crucial for managing data and logic that isn't associated with a single view or component. They are the perfect tool for our task of communicating between sibling components. So let's create a shared service that will act as a bridge between them. Before we dive in, let's clarify the Angular services. What the Angular services are? They are singletons that provide a way to share data and functionality across components. By injecting the same service instance into our sibling components, we can ensure they communicate effectively so think of a service as a shared workspace where both components can access the same data and methods now let's generate a shared service named profile service this service will handle the data exchange between our display and edit components so for that run the command ng generate service profile this command creates a new service file along with its testing file angular will also update the root module to to include this service as a provider making it available throughout our application now open the profile service file we and we are going to set up an observable to allow our components to react to data changes so here i will define a private property or variable profile source is equal to new behavior subject that should be imported from the rxjs and here for now i will provide any type and default value would be null now i will define another variable of this class that would be current profile is equal to this profile source as observable now i will define a function change profile prof and it will receive a parameter with type any and i will use this dot profile source dot next function and pass the profile to it now let me quickly explain here we have imported behavior subject from rxjs and created a profile source which is a private behavior subject this will hold the current profile data the current profile is an observable that other parts of an app, app can subscribe to and react whenever the profile data changes the change profile method is what we will use to update the profile data from our components next we need to inject this service into our sibling components to use it so let's start with the display data component in this version i'm able to inject it by using the inject function so i don't need to use the constructor to inject it anymore so let's do that private profile service is equal to inject make sure to import the inject function and then pass it the profile service class now let's implement the on init class and define the ng on init function in it and then i will use this start profile service dot current profile dot subscribe and i will receive the profile as the parameter from this subscription callback and <clears throat> here you will have the logic to update the display component with new profile data so we have injected the profile service into our component and in the ng on init life cycle hook we subscribe to current profile observable whenever the profile data changes the code inside the subscribe block will run allowing our display component to react to new data now let's implement the logic to change the profile from the edit data component and see how it reflects the display data component so let's go back to the edit data component ts file and here i will inject the profile service in the same way like we did in the display data <coughs> and now i will define a function save profile that will receive new profile as a parameter and we will then call the function profile service dot change profile and pass it the new profile so here in the 
edit data component we have a save profile method that takes a new profile object when this method is called perhaps after a user edits a profile and clicks save it calls the change profile method on our service updating the profile data this change will automatically be reflected in the display data component thanks to the subscription we set up earlier so let's quickly see it in action so here in the edit data component i will add a button edit profile and on click i will call the function save profile okay so this is very simple example in real world it can be more complex so i'm just showing it in simple way just to give you understanding so here <clears throat> i will just pass an object or whatever you want to pass okay now let's go to the app component and import both of these components as i'm using standalone components so i will just import them in the imports array instead of declaring them anywhere and display data component okay now here i can simply add app edit data and also display data i can add the heading as well okay so now let's open the inspect element and i'm going to click on the edit profile uh, this file is not saved yet so let me save it now okay now click on the edit profile and you will see that the data that we passed from the edit data component is being displayed inside the display data components you can also display it in the html as well that would be very simple so instead of showing this i would have to define a property here profile is equal to null and instead of showing in the console i will save it in the profile variable now i can use profile and pipe it through json pipe okay so right now you can see it is null if you click on that then the data would be displayed here and that's how you set up an angular service to facilitate communication between sibling components with profile service our components are now effectively sharing data reacting to changes and maintaining separation of concerns this makes our application more modular maintainable and scalable great work getting through angular services next we will delve deeper into observables and behavior subjects and how to utilize them for more complex scenarios all right you have made incredible progress by implementing reactive data patterns in your angular application but before we wrap up it's crucial to ensure everything works as expected if this tutorial helped you to understand angular better and you have enjoyed the journey hit the like button and share your thoughts in comments below your feedback inspires and guides future tutorials and if you have haven't already subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss out on new content designed to elevate your coding skills thank you for watching and being an active member of our community check out other videos to continue learning and stay ahead of the world of angular keep coding and keep learning and i will see you in the next video